it's about 6 37 in the morning and when my kids just came running and saying mom it's snowing outside you see all the flurries behind me so folks you remember all of those seeds we were planting the beans and the peas our flowers yeah it's snowing in sunny central Oregon I guess I got a little bit too ahead of myself and planted a little early So many people have asked us, how do we get everything done that needs to get done as a family of nine? And one of my answers is teamwork. Many hands make light work. Do you see this road right here? This road is the road that we walk to get our garbage cans and bring them back. And dad has to put them in the trailer and take them out on Sundays. And I want to show you something. Hopefully you can see this. Look who's taking it back. Yep, that's my five-year-old. Five-year-olds can move garbage cans that are like four times their size. It might take a while, might need some help, but he's doing a pretty good job, right? It takes a little longer. Everything kind of takes a little longer. Teaching kids how to load and unload the dishwasher, how to do their laundry, that kind of stuff. But once they get it, once you take the time to teach them, then they become a good worker. What we like to call as an asset <laughs> team member. Good job, Ethan. So proud of you. Neighbor just put some uh, horses in our backyard. Kids are excited about it. I guess one of them is named Murdoch. Must be crazy like uh, Murdoch on the A team or something. That's what I'm thinking. Hey, Ethan, tell us about the horses. Awesomer. We create new words in the Tulpa family. You protecting? What do you got? What are you packing? And a Walter P99. Walter P99. Airsoft. Those of you that were just about to be scared. Airsoft. But they look real. Yeah, you're naked. Look at that. Rolling around. Look at the horse. Oh, wow. Are you going to ride them? She said that we might be able to. Oh, fun. What a good neighbor. Zephyr and Murdoch are trying to battle for leadership. Uh, they haven't been together in a long time, I guess. So they are uh, duking it out a little bit to figure out who's going to lead the clan here. This one or this one? Murdoch or Zephyr? We will see who becomes the leader. So Tenkaiser is a made up word. And this author, Tim Herson, says Kaizen is problematic today. Tenkaizen, if it existed in Japanese, it would mean good revolution. And good revolution means starting from new, thinking fresh. It's that productive thinking I was talking about. Kaizen is reproductive thinking. Reproducing better than before what we already had. What if what you already had is bad? What if Steve Jobs said, the phone is good, let's incrementally improve it, and so we still have buttons today on our phones. Some of you are like, amen. Where's the buttons? <laughs> <laughs> There's a diminishing market for buttons. <laughs> okay? Think about that, how that might relate to your phone. Don't All right, so, uh, so you ask productive questions. And you suspend, you, what starts to come in is I know the answer to that, this is how we do it, that's how we do it, you're not doing productive thinking. Productive thinking is when you suspend what you know long enough to have clarity on what solutions could exist if you weren't blinded by what you already know. And it's really hard to do. It's the obligation of the leader to be a futurist. Ooh, said that. That. Ooh, that is cool. Whoever said that is cool. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> Here's another challenge that when we say sorry, we don't just say sorry. Say just saying sorry oh. doesn't mean anything in the Tolpen house anymore. You can't just go sorry. sorry I want to ask sorry. Luke if he knows what you're supposed to do. What are you supposed to do, Luke? Huh? You have to say sorry what you're shy for. Oh, that's right. So you actually apologize for what saying you what it was that you did. But I want you all to like recognize that if you just go up to someone and go, sorry. Is that really a repentant heart? No. 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 <laughs> no. It's like a person who's just saying the word sorry. It's not connected to their heart at all. So if you go at this side, <laughs> I'm really sorry for what sorry. I did because I was being really mean and that's not what you did. No, Very good. That's what it was, yeah. So sometimes you want to be specific and you want to say, I'm sorry for getting mad at you. I'm sorry for yelling at you. I'm sorry for crying. not helping you. I'm sorry for crying. That tells them that you really have thought about what you did wrong and that you're able to put words to it and acknowledge that you did it. Luke, what's the key lesson here? I do know. Okay, so when we say something to someone else and they get defensive, or don't react well to what we said, always assume it's your fault. And the reason is, whether it's your fault or not, you can only control yourself. You can never control someone else. You can only change yourself. You can never change somebody else. And so you have to find a new and better way to communicate with the other person. So as we, I want us to work on that this week and I want the defensiveness to decrease because the sender of information as you're communicating to one another improves and you find a better way to communicate with Megan. Because Megan is really relational. But it's good for us to be aware. One of the things that we were talking about was being aware when you're communicating of what two things, how you say something and what you're saying specifically, which is also how you're saying it. So your tone, but also what exactly you're saying to a person. Because body it's language. easy, body language is huge. Tone of your voice is huge. If you come across as you're angry, people will receive that and they'll automatically get defensive. They'll stop listening to what you're saying actually. Yeah. Because they don't like being yelled at. They don't like being disrespected. And so, Let's just try hard to work on our communication skills, as Dad said. Right. I know I do. So much. <laughs> we all do. I know yes. I do. Yes. Like earlier today, there's a little squabble in our family between a couple people. And their relationship wasn't as good as it could have been. And it was because when we have sin in our relationship that is unrepented, unconfessed sin, it puts a wall between us and them and it hurts our relationship with them and that's why it's important that we confess our sins to one another and we apologize right Luke yeah oh so it's falling off the cliff you always have to try to get them up back on <laughs> what? if someone's falling off a cliff you always try to pull them back up that would be kind if that, that ever right. happened <laughs> we will quote you one day get arrested you don't so here's, here's a key statement familiarity breeds contempt. There's, there's some words for you. Familiarity. We're all familiar with each other, right? Ethan, Are you pay familiar? attention to daddy. Yeah. Breeds contempt, which is like conflict. Breeds uh, taking uh, for granted each other, using each other. Contempt uh, could actually, in it could also involve some anger, anger in the heart, right? You know, anger in the heart. Just being kind of like, oh, just don't like that person, or they always do that, or yeah. they, that's that's contempt. I don't know if you've ever thought that about somebody where you're like, they always. Well, here's what happens if we have guests over, do we act a little different sometimes? Yeah, yeah. yeah. but we shouldn't. We shouldn't, right? Do we act nicer to guests than we do to each other? Are we as familiar <laughs> with our guests as we are with each other? No. 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 <laughs> and so what does that mean? It means because we're so familiar with each other, it's easier to get angry with each other. It's easier to take the relationship for granted and not treat each other with respect or to use and love. 
So it's really important to fight against that and go, you know what? Even though I see Ethan every day, and sometimes he says things that bother me, how should I communicate with Ethan being an older brother or older sister? Familiarity breeds contempt. contempt. 